Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics, I'm Gregory and today we are going to take a look in the usage of a BJT transistor as a radio frequency signal switch. Let's go! So guys, I was reading some articles about RF switching, also the, this one, the Pin Dial Circuit Designer Handbook, this is in the description of the video, and I came across this classical topology here using diodes. This topology works by forward and reverse biasing two diodes to make a path of conduction to the RF signal. So when we apply the forward bias, so here in this example is 5 volts in the middle of the two diodes here, the two diodes will conduct, so we, we are going to have current in the two diodes, and the dynamic resistance of the diodes will be very low. When we enter the active state applying 5 volts here in the middle of the junctions, as the two diodes will be conducting, this circuit will look like to the RF signal like a small resistance with a small inductance in series. And from a small signal perspective, this is what the RF signal will see and it can pass through. When we apply zero volts here, so zero volts here in the middle of the two diodes, no current will flow and the diodes will be at the off state. In the off state, the diodes will virtually look like a small capacitor. So, each diode will look like to the RF signal as a small capacitance, the junction capacitance of the diode. And as this capacitance can be very low in some diodes, the signal will not pass through because the, the capacitance will appear to the RF signal as a very high reactance. We have reflection of the RF signal here at the input the signal is reflected back by the series reactance and no signal appears at the output. Looking at this diagram here, I started to think if we could use a transistor in the place of the diodes. Because when we look to a transistor from a large signal perspective, the transistor looks like two diodes. So if we place an NPN transistor here, the first diode will be the base emitter junction and the other diode will be the base collector junction and this needs to work. So let's try. So guys, this is the circuit we are going to use in the test. We have here two transmission lines that couple the input signal to the BJT transistor switch. We are going to input the signal here in this connector and you're gonna measure the output with the spectrum analyzer connecting at this SMA, SMA end here. Here at the middle we have the two coupling capacitors that decouples the DC controlling current from the RF signal and we have the three resistors we are going to use to bias the junctions of the transistor. At the middle of the two diode junctions we have a resistor where we can inject current, so applying a voltage here current will start to flow in the two junctions, forward biasing each junction, so from RF small signal perspective, this path here will be closed and RF energy will flow from the input to the output. The bias comes from the power supply at the bench and we are injecting here at the input a 100 MHz signal at negative 10 dBm. The output goes to the spectrum analyzer there in the top. So guys, we see the signal here in the spectrum analyzer and it is at negative 30 dB, so we have 20 dB of isolation. Well guys, pretty good for a homemade switch using a BJT transistor. So let's turn on the biasing, applying 5 volts and we can see that now we have the signal almost at the full input power, negative 10 dB and we have some loss in the cable and some loss in the switch 100 meg and a span of 20 meg yeah there is the signal and you can turn on off and turn on the signal using the bench power supply this switch is actually a voltage controlled attenuator guys and we can see it here changing the biasing current we can change the attenuation amount pretty nice it can be used as an amplitude modulator I expect in a lower frequency more isolation, so we can go to 10 meg, let's go here, and a center frequency of 10 meg, and here I think we will have much more isolation, and we actually can see it here, the signal now is leaking at negative 6 dB, 60 dB of and on as we actually change here the biasing. Higher frequency, we expect the 
behavior to be worse. So I think we are going to have much less isolation. So let's go to one gig and my generator here to one gig. And now we can see that we are on the off state. Look how smaller is the isolation, almost no isolation. So this switch is not useful at the microwave band here. So you can try to turn it on and on and off and you see very small change there. So not useful for microwave circuits. We can measure the insertion loss and the isolation stepping the generator, sweeping the frequency spectrum. So let's program a sweep list here. Let's turn on a frequency sweep. Let's go from 10 meg to one gigahertz with fifth points. Now we need to set up here the start frequency to, let's go to 5 meg, the stop frequency to 1005 meg, okay, and we need to put the trace in max hold. Now we're gonna program the power supply to 5 volts here, so the switch is running in the active state, and we can start the sweep. The signal generator is sweeping the frequency spectrum, and we are here holding the measure of each frequency. So we can see here the insertion loss dropping as the frequency increases. Pretty nice. We see that from the insertion loss perspective, it's actually pretty good. At one gig here, we have less than five dB of attenuation. But now we are going to see from the isolation perspective and it will be pretty worse here in the higher frequency band. Let's use this a second trace here, trace number two, and put this trace at max hold, okay? So now we have a new trace in the spectrum analyzer and we are going to start a new sweep now. Let's go. Okay, look at these guys. Pretty beautiful, look at these guys. What we are actually seeing here, guys, is the insertion loss is the drop in the yellow signal, okay, when the switch is in the active state, and the isolation is the difference between the active state and the off state. So we see here clearly that you have the higher isolation in the lower frequency bands, and as the frequency is increased, the isolation starts to decrease, and now the switch almost do not work anymore because the signal can pass through the switch even at the off state, so we have pretty low isolation here, but man, for a small uh, frequency signal here until 100 meg, let's say for a VHF signal, this switch is a pretty good switch. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if so, please subscribe to the channel, send this video to your friends, give a thumbs up to help me grow the channel, and see you in the next video.